the hell are you doing? <laughs> well, I was going to tell you before you call that we have to have a little bit of a delay, it seems like, or it gets cut off on the front end. Uh, what happened? Well, no, it's just like if we jump right on the answer too hard, the recording doesn't uh, start. Oh. So, I was just seeing how much patience you had there. I mean, you know, it sounded like you had like running running water in the background. It was kind of soothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the C26 meditation tapes are coming. <laughs> That's right. I'm working on them. <laughs> we've had a few a few requests for those, and uh, maybe we'll do like a, um, maybe on the car ride or our trip to Ohio here in, in a week and a half or something, maybe we'll have some spare time and we can do uh, like open water anxiety and meditation listening. Like yeah, 20 man. minutes. Yeah. How about a pre-race? Oh yeah, we could do that. That would be good, man. To get him, yeah. you know, get him kind of lightening up a little bit, loosen up, relax. Not too loose. Not too loose, but you know, energy. You know, kind of soothe him down and then make him laugh. Bring him in. You know, kind of. <laughs> That's right. Bring get, him in. Take him off the. You know, like I always say, just try and help him forget that it's a race. That's true. Just so they can relax and be themselves. Trust the training. And then when the gun goes off. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck, sucker. <laughs> <laughs> Way to relax. They're not even ready for the ground and pound that is a lot of the swim. Even even with a rolling start, they're just like <laughs> they're like uh, they're like the yoga teacher getting thrown into a mosh pit. It just doesn't. It's not going to work out very well. It's not going to work out very well. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> yeah, you better. Uh, yeah, maybe at the end we'll start with the you know. We'll shift gears and kind of throw in some metal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have you it's, ever been? In, have you ever been in a mosh pit? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's been yeah a long too. time ago. It's been, a, it's been a long, long time ago. Yeah, it's been about fifty years for me. <laughs> See, yeah, mine hadn't been that long. Mine was in <sighs> my sophomore year of college. Uh, Rage Against the Machine Municipal Auditorium. Whoa. Yeah. That's pretty strong. It was real strong. And it was a... uh, I remember it basically just turned out being like uh, me and like the guys that I went with. We basically just like carried people from the mosh pit to like the back medical because people were just getting like absolutely demolished. I think I ended up having to throw away my jeans (laughs) after... uh, after this concert, I swear, because they had they had blood on them from like carrying people there. It's just crazy. It's this is back like this is like 2001. Maybe you need to go into a mosh pit with your shorts now and get rid of those, and yeah. Allie will be happy. I've already got rid of them, but <laughs> I'm not going to last long in a mosh pit with flip flops and sandals. Uh, I could probably go over to East Nashville though. And hang that tight. probably helped you at Wisconsin uh, that swim, actually. Yeah, heck yeah, it did. I love that thing. Um. um Congrats to everybody who conquered the races this weekend. Um, lots of them. Lots of them. Lots of races this weekend. I know all over. We've we've already gotten a few emails, and we know that you know one of our biggest uh, podcasts to date has been the Muncie seventy point three podcast. Uh, we've already gotten a good response to that, and I I know we had a we had about fifteen athletes racing, and I know as usual. It is a hot, hot day at Muncie. Mm-hmm. Um, as fast as that bike course is, the swim is fair to what I would consider slow. Uh, it's just a slow swim. It's you know, a tough it, one, man. It is. It is. It is I, I think it's legitimately long. Um, I, and a couple of things come into fact. You know, come into come to mind. Um, is that it's it's fresh water. It's not moving. Uh, there's no wetsuit, it's warm, and it's long. Um, and I'm also not, I can't remember, it's been, I think, two years since I've done it, but where they put the timing mat coming out of the water. But it's just, it's just a slow swim. Uh, it, it always has been ever since I've done it. I think it's my slowest 70.3 swim time. Uh, like two of them. I think it's just it's just one of those swims. I think it's just that way. In Ohio, I think it's going to be much the same. Those swims in the reservoir while it's protected, if it's warm and no wetsuit, the way that things are, it's just I think it's you're going to be looking at a, a slower time. So, but um, bike course, arguably the best bike course on the whole circuit. 
in terms of how fast it is, how perfect the pavement is, and the entire bike course is closed to traffic, um, which is insane. Um, it's what's well, totally awesome. So, and it's no wonder that race sells out or get, gets close to selling out every single year, even though it's in the middle of you know Bumpkinville, um, and is a horrible spectator event. The people love that it's a safe, fast bike course. But man, that run, there is no moving air. There is very little to no shade, rolling hills, and hot as all get out. So kudos to everyone, uh, again, who raced all around, and then especially that race. I know it was hot everywhere. I remember I looked at my phone around 10 or 11, uh, and I think it said feels like 100. Oh, I did it? Thinking, man, thank God I didn't sign up for that. Um, well, you'll get yours in a couple of weeks. Yeah, I know. I'll get mine here in, here in a, week, like a week and a half. Um, but uh, yeah, and uh, in case you didn't know and you're just now tuning in, uh, this is, in fact, the Crushing Iron Triathlon Podcast. Today is July 16th. It's a Monday. It's 10, 10 a.m. Central Time. I'm Robbie. I'm the coach. That is Mike, color commentator, age group extraordinaire, bachelor former above-ground pool owner, Wisconsin Badger fan, and former collegiate baseball player. Oh, man. Thank you very much for that introduction. You're welcome. Uh, But, yeah, lots of things happened this weekend, lots going on, and and, uh, it's just, you know, that time of year where you're always racing, something's always happening, and then we just move on. The biggest takeaway I had from this weekend, just from my athletes, you know, we had a lot of great results and a lot of okay results. And, and, but the, the biggest was here's, you just, you always learn something. It's just there, there is, you, you do two things. You always learn something and you always understand that you have more work to do and that's it. You know, it's like, you know, you can enjoy it for the moment, but it's, uh, the, the sport is so, there's so many moving parts that you just kind of kind of take it with what it is and then move on to the next one and learn from it and keep going and that's what that's what really sets apart the people who are in this sport for a bucket list like a one time off or people who really truly love just the the ebb and flow and the ups and downs and the good races and the great races and the bad races and the tough races and the unfortunate and unlucky races and everything in between yeah. Sorry, Kona's like going to town over here. She's like acts like she's hadn't drank water in like ten years. <laughs> <laughs> she had, listen, she had a traumatic weekend, so Oh uh, really? Yeah, I did too. Like I've never lost her ever. Oh my like, goodness. Yeah, and listen, Kona and I, she's uh let's see, she is five of Miss Sorfa. She's like she's almost she just turned six. So um, and she's been with me through all kinds of not great things and great things, but she's she's like my best friend. So uh, Saturday morning, uh, Allie went out for her stroller run with Hayden, and I was vacuuming the house like a good husband. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I didn't hear her answer the door, and so she had to come in the front door and then come open the garage and put the stroller in. I guess she left the do- the front door open. And Kona really doesn't go that far. I mean, yeah. she's she 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 doesn't stray very far from me or the house. But apparently, she went outside, and then I, I didn't see her go outside. And Allie didn't either, because she like you know looped back around into the garage. And about thirty minutes later, they left to go to some event or something. And I was about to hop on the trainer for like two hours. And I was like, I haven't seen Kona in a little bit. So I go upstairs and look around, nowhere. Run downstairs, I'm like, maybe she's in her room, nowhere. So I go back upstairs again, maybe I missed her. And then you get that, like, sudden panic feeling of, oh my god, like, where's my dog? Yeah, that's bad. Like, it's like, I mean, it's it's right up there, yeah, slightly behind, you know, being at the pool and not knowing where your kid is. Mm-hmm. Uh, you look at me, and I was like, "Oh shit!" Because of course you think like you know, worst thing ever. Yeah. Look, look outside. She's nowhere. And so I do like the drive around, and finally come back up towards my house, and uh, some lady was like, not lady, but like her daughter was like sprinting up our hill. I mean, like 
Shalane Sh- Flanagan style. I'm like, all right, this lady isn't that fast. She's probably she's probably got to tell me something. So I like slow down. She's like, ah, have you lost your dog? And I was like, yeah, I actually have. She was like, is she is she a white lab? I'm like, yeah, that's her. And so she was like across the street, two houses down, and the this family had like seen her like wandering around and grabbed her and took her inside and gave her water. But she was <laughs> over there for like 30 minutes. And uh, I was like, just thank God I like decided to go look for her before I hopped on my trainer. She'd have been, I mean, she'd have been safe, obviously, but she was there for a while. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so she had a little traumatic, and so did I. But uh, but yeah, she's good. Yeah, they just kind of want to see a few things. Maddie will do that once in a while. She'll just go out and be like a na- you know, two neighbors away. Or now she's got a new sleeping spot behind the TV, and I never remember that. Oh, so I kind of look for her and panic every once in a while, but I don't know why she goes back there. But anyway, yeah, back to the back to the. Uh, yeah, uh, I guess to I get learning. A few announcements. Yeah, a little bit of learning coming up, but uh, I want to let everybody know that uh, remind everybody that I am doing daily live YouTube updates on my 100 days to Louisville Ironman Louisville. Um, sign up for uh, follow Crushing Iron on YouTube, and you'll get you should get a notice whenever I go live. Plus, it stays up there, and I'm just kind of babbling on about whatever, <laughs> you know, things I learn. It's true. Talking about the 10:17 run a little bit. Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> one of our favorites. That's it, man. One of our favorites. You can follow us on Instagram at c26 underscore triathlon. We have a closed Facebook group. You search Crushing Iron Group and you can get in there. Uh, We have coaching camps information. Camps are selling out for next year, I hear. They are, yeah. May and June are sold out for next year. Uh, May waiting list is full. (laughs) June waiting list is open. And then we're about 40%. I think capacity for late July and then our August camp. So, uh, if you have any questions about that camp, want more information for next year, uh, plan ahead. Uh, you can always email me directly at c 26 coach at gmail.com, where I also believe we have a link in the show notes straight to the registration page. Yes. I want to give first a quick shout out to, uh, Phil Jones, whose, uh, pirates took five straight from my brewers. Uh, Oof. Ouch. Yeah. Yeah, as we're entering the All-Star break. I'm kind of a in-and-out Brewer fan. They've let me down so many times. I'm still there, but I just don't have faith. I also want to give a shout-out to some of the new members, if that's all right. Yeah, go for it, man. Samantha Brooke Jimenez, Larkin Hagen, Shannon Glassoff Cooper, Rachel Grounds, Russell Anderson Williams, Bonnie Robiecki, Brandon Harding, Chris Hudgens, and, of course, the Ohio 70.3 race director, Kenny Hammond. Welcome to the group. Welcome. You can check out our last podcast, which is a preview of Ohio 70.3, the course. And there's a lot of good stuff in there if you just like uh, learning how triathlons work from the Ironman perspective. That's it. Um, I got to say, he... Kenny, you know, we've got, um, you know, Ohio 70-point theater two weeks from yesterday. And it, that was probably one of the better received podcasts I think we've had in a in quite a while. Yeah. Well, you know, good info. He was great. great. Im- he was a great info and a great guest. Mm-hmm. So kudos to you again, Kenny. Hope you're still listening, although you might not be because you're super slammed. Uh but Get hey, dude, the final the final race. There's always something to be learned on the Crushing Iron podcast. This you is true. Even for race directors, this is true. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it was it was kind of just it was one of those weekends where uh, everybody you know kind of you know went after it. And but it, it is it. You just you. I guess I'm even as a coach, like even though I do go through this like every single weekend, it's just it's it's fun to watch athletes. Uh, like recognize how much there is to learn after every single event. Yeah. Um. And and what 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 there is to learn. And then like looking at things, and just like perspective. Like I had one athlete, Stephanie Stephanie Thomas, formerly known as Stephanie Sanders. And yeah, uh, yeah. yeah you're Good welcome. thing I know That's that now. Yeah, I know. I knew um, that, but I guess I just whatever. You didn't know know that, yeah. But um. She, but 
she was doing Muncie, and this is like her last uh, big race before we kind of focus in on Ironman Chattanooga, and coming in in great shape, and uh, ends up getting cut off on the bike course and goes over the handlebars. Uh, really, really kind of, I mean, very, very banged up. Uh, a nice little wound on the hip, and then a couple other places. Ends up just gutting it out. Um, finishing, I think she actually ended up only being like. I think 15 minutes behind her PR, um, which is on that course. Her bike split was still faster than last year, even with. Uh, so we we knew we were in good shape, but we were kind of texting back and forth after the race, and and she's generally pretty hard on herself as a as a former collegiate athlete, and and she just was like, you know what? She was like, she was a, and and honestly, in much better spirits than I think I would have been. Uh, having something like that happen uh but we both we were just kind of texting back and forth and i ended up saying something like you know maybe this is just what you need uh well this is just what you needed in a while like you don't want anybody to have a bike wreck because things could go always go south she was like yeah i think I, I needed this to prove to me i was tough enough to do iron man chattanooga mm. And it's it's just it's it's a great perspective to have and and the learning experience and and the choices that you make like within a race and then what you can learn about yourself. Like I had another athlete who um, Amanda Ball who hasn't ran really at all in like the past three or four weeks. She's been dealing with some issues and we just kind of said, all right, let's go out, let's still give Muncie a whirl and let's see what happens. Um, you know, and if you feel she's actually doing, coincidentally doing Ironman Chattanooga as well, and uh, ended up sticking it out and and then running pretty good, ran the whole thing, and uh, I thought did very well. And we were just kind of texting back and forth too, and I was like, it just you know, it, it says a lot about you and your approach, given kind of the things that have been going on. She's like, yeah, you know, I wasn't gonna do not start, and I wasn't gonna DNF. Like once I made the choice to start, I was not gonna not finish. Um, I think there's just there's so much to be said for those those they're not badges of honor by any means, but they're just like they're things you can hang your hat on for when times get tough to look back and think, okay, I was going twenty something miles an hour, got cut off, went over my handlebars, banged myself up, and then proceeded to not just not just finish the bike to get to transition, but to knowingly put myself through another two and a half hours of unnecessary grueling pain in a hundred degree heat with no shade mm. like in in the lessons you can not not the lessons just like what you figure out about yourself that you're you are tougher and that maybe you we wouldn't have always made those decisions but i think and maybe if it was a different day of the week you don't make that decision like, i think we go through that like in training a lot is some days we have like, you know, one ounce of of discomfort, and we pull the reins in, and we're like, ah, we just don't have it today. Mm-hmm. And then you've got other days where you have a lot of discomfort, and you're like, oh yeah, this didn't stop me. I'm I'm pushing through. I'm I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go more. Yeah. And it's it's like, and it's it's, it's tough. It's like, well, what like what makes the difference in like a 24 hour span sometimes, or where you are mentally. Uh, it's just, it's just, it's weird. It, and, but it's, it's something that it's just another reason why, you know, endurance sports are so great and so insightful for people is that there's always something to learn and you figure out of something about yourself every single time you step out the door. Yeah. And I think that, man, it's like, I was kind of tracking yesterday and, and, and I've been there in the, on that course a couple times, and you know there's certain times when I'm, especially that uh, I guess they only had one bike or a run split, right? Which was the turnaround basically. Yeah, and that's my own, that's my own beef. Yeah, I, I mean you have like four to five bike splits over fifty six miles, and you give us one on yeah. the out and back. Like, give me a break. But yeah, whatever. I thought that was a little bit, but I just what it did for me is it crystallized i can actually i mean there's a lot of run courses where i can't remember much of anything but Mm -hmm. i i completely remember that turnaround at muncie because it's so far away it just seems like it never comes man and uh 
I it's could, like it's like Louisville. Yeah. You make a few turns. And you're like, here's a turn around. No, I'm going around the roundabout and look way up the road. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, and so I remember that, and I also remember the uh, I mean, distinctly remember the pain coming back. <laughs> it was, you know, because there's those hills like we talk about all the time. They're not mammoth, but they really start seeming bigger uh, on mm-hmm. that when you come back. So. I knew people, what people were going through, and you're right. It's like, you know, you can, and I've done this a million times. You can sit there, and but you, you you always forget, I think, how tough it really is when you get like towards the end of that run on a seventy point three, an Olympic. It doesn't matter towards the end of the race. It is tough, man, and you really got to dig deep. Even though you know you might be thinking before, and yeah, I'm gonna go out and do a little. You know, you you've done a bunch of these races and. I'm going to go do a 70.3 and, you know, I've done many, so I, you know, it's no big deal, but man, it is always rough Mm -hmm. and you have to find something and how you find that is, is unbelievable. But I think the more you do, obviously that's, you know, the kind of thing we're talking about all the time is that once you find those solutions, you find ways to transfer those into everyday life or whatever it may be. And I was just thinking about like, you know, I, I just... I don't know where, honestly, the sport of triathlon is as far as attendance and participation, but I just get this sense that, uh, you know, the more, you know, I don't know, maybe it's just because we're so close to it and we, we've, we're we we having all these kind of first timers, you know, you know, email us and thank us and, you know, how great it was and, you know, how they're hooked. And I just get the sense that maybe it, it, that it's, uh, you know, even gaining more steam. I, am I off on that? Do you have that same feeling? I, I think I feel like in the long run, this is going to happen because more and more people are going to like. I know more and more people that are losing interest in watching sports. You, you know what I mean? Like the fan side of it, and they're actually kind of like that's sort of how life is now. It's sort of like you can do anything you want, and people are starting to participate in it. You know, versus passively observe it. Yeah, I can. I think that people are well. I hope that people are getting out and doing more things in, in general. But yeah, I think the sport is is slowly kind of gaining its gaining traction again. Um, yeah, I'm, I don't think it's going through some like you know gigantic, um, you know, like it did in like the late 2000s when it just like exploded. Um, but I think it's growing slowly. And, and the thing about you know, any kind of growth is, you know, you want it to be, you know, like, like I, I think what happened when there was kind of a false growth in the sport in the late 2000s, it became, it was like a huge influx of bucket listers. And they weren't, they had like no desire to be in the sport and stay in the sport. It was, I'm going to get a bike, I'm going to train for a year, I'm going to do an Ironman, I'm going to tell everybody I did it, and then I'm going to leave. And, like, those aren't good for the sport. Uh, I mean, I I don't think. I think that people who get in the sport and stick in the sport, no matter what they do, no matter what distance, like, to me, the athlete that does sprints and Olympics every single year and never does a half and never does a full, and they stick with it, they're infinitely more valuable than the one and dunner. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, and I understand that not everybody can glass it, but I think it's just that attitude. Like you want people that are going to stick around and stay because they're they're always going to talk about the sport. They're going to bring people in. So I, I do. I think it's growing slowly again, um, and hopefully, you know, it'll be a sustainable growth. You know, with people that are going to stick around. Um, you know, and I think some of that has to do uh, with the, the sport is coming. I think a little more a little more attractive. I, and I, I don't. I don't think that. You know, you see races closing and you think, well, you know, maybe, um, you know, their attendance is that low. It's not so much that attendance is that low is that, you know, you look at races that close and it's like, it's like we have, we, we make our own, athletes make their own choices. And like there, there are still plenty of races that sell out. There's still plenty of races that sell out in like 48 hours that have been around for forever, hmm. you know, and it's just, uh, you know, we were talking to, you know, last week about Syracuse and uh, Kenny, and it was like, yeah, it, it left. It left because it was hard. It left for another couple of re- couple of reasons, I think, uh, from just being like an oversaturated market within a small window in a very tight line. But like, 
you know, people are willing to travel. Um, and I think a lot of it has to do with this. You just got to find the right place and let it stick. And I think places like Delaware, Ohio, and Muncie, Indiana, and, you know, the newly addition like Waco, Texas, like it's a really good, really, really good time of year. Um, those smaller towns are, you know, people are willing to drive and go there and, and, and make a trip of it. So, um, yeah, I, I do think it's it's growing. Yeah, and kind of on that one and done tip, it's like, I was going to ask you a couple questions today, and one was, um, you know, just because I am, of course, training for another Ironman, and um, I am trying to train within my boundaries of, you know, I, this this whole, like, when you say, when you, you know, five years ago, when we were six years ago or whatever, um, talking about Ironman, and you know, I decided to do one, and the first thing I heard from, uh, you know, everybody who had done one, the sort of traditional Ironman training was that, you know, they they all leaned on this 20 hours a week, and, you know, like, all these, you know, long, long, painful, everything sucks, you know, kind of mm-hmm. thing, and I think that over the course of our 180 podcast, we've been kind of trying to find a middle ground or some kind of, like, new... Not, I don't want to say new approach, but just sort of a real, more realistic, more enjoyable, more fun, fun way to go about it. And, you know, where it doesn't have to be, you know, because I think one and doners, they just get in and they kill themselves and go over their, you know, abilities and way out of their comfort zone and hurt themselves and what have you. And then they don't want any more part of it. Um but what, how, like, how are you feeling right now? You know, when I say traditional Ironman training, what what comes to your mind? Uh, uh, like the, okay, so this is, I mean, this is honestly a great exa- a good example. I'm not going to use this athlete by name, um, but I currently coach an athlete. Been with with this athlete for, um, I'll, I'll just say he's a guy because I'm going to slip up and say a guy at some point. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, we've been working for the other about a year, and he shot me a text and was like, "Hey, you know, you know, let me. What do you think about doing an Ironman next year? Um, you know, what would training look like? What would the differences be like? You know, I'm trying to, you know, work. You know, like we all do. You know, if you're, if listen, if you're in this sport, you have a Ironman sales pitch to your significant other." You know, if yeah. you if if you have one, like you listen, you you got you got checklists to be made. You got things so like I had an athlete last night <laughs> text me. And he, this is a different athlete, and he said, "Hey man, what do you think about me doing Ironman Louisville?" And I said, "Have you asked your wife?" He said, "He said yeah." And I said, well, "What'd she say?" And she said, "Well, she hasn't answered yet." <laughs> and I said, "Well, I said, well, then I'm not answering it either, <laughs> because, <laughs> because I, this is a this is a team effort here. We got to be on the same page, but." It's just that's just how it is, and and it's so anyway, back to this, this other guy. I was like, hey, well, I was like, well, how was your training before when you did this Iron Man? And he was one of those guys who was self coached and was going out and doing like ninety, hundred mile, hundred ten mile rides, and then getting off and running thirteen. Mm-hmm. And a, I just think it is. It's the worst idea ever. Um, and I, th- I just think it's incredibly, and to be frank, like if, you're, if you're a coach and you're having athletes do that, I think it's incredibly irresponsible. Um, but she's genuinely afraid that he's going to, to he's going to do so much damage to himself that he's not going to be able to do any do anything else. Mm. But she has that for good reason, you know, because of of what he went through and what he endured and like what he was putting himself through and. So I, I think there's there's things like side by side when you look at the longevity of an athlete. It's like, you know, are they being guided in the right way to do it healthy and sustainable? And they're not either a driving themselves into the ground for a whole year, and then just can't can barely recover, or or they have a coach that's driving them into the ground with these twenty twenty five hour weeks, um, because. One of the biggest mistakes people make when they choose to take on a 70.3 or a full is I'm going to rearrange my life around my training. Mm. Yeah. Which is the worst thing you can do. Uh, it's 
let me work my training around your life uh, because your life is what's always going to dictate the training anyway. Let's be honest. I mean, you, you can think that it's not going to happen that way, but it is. So let's dic- let, let's do the best we can with what we have. And so like, there's that's what that's what like when I see like Iron Man training, like how like I just don't know if I can go through that again. And like you have the athlete thinking that, and then you have like their spouse or their or their significant other or even their kids that are like, well, great, like I'm basically not going to see my parents for the next six months. And that breeds this like tension of and and somewhat like animosity. Like, I don't want you to do this ever again because it's not good for you and it's not good for us. Um, and that, that was a conversation I had last year with an with a first time athlete who did um an Ironman and his wife was like, this has been the best experience ever because honestly, the last time he did it, it about ruined us. Um, not like ruined us, like, you know, in, in, in the like serious sense, but like it was so over the top and so it just, it's, it's not good. Like, and, and that's, that's with anything in life. Like if you obsess and like obsess and obsess and obsess with one thing, and it and it takes precedent over everything else. Then you're doing a your support system, your support crew a giant disservice, and you're doing yourself a incredible disservice as well. About uh, in the list of priorities, you know, like you should you should 100% always say, hey, you know what, I'm just going to skip today because I'd rather do this. You know, like our 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 sessions key and is training important. Yes, don't get me wrong. But at the same time, like, what are you giving up? You know, like uh, spending time with your daughter. Spend like that's some of my favorite comments I get in training peaks. It's got nothing to do with an athlete like shattering a PR, getting up at 3 a.m. and crushing it. It's like, hey, I skipped today because I thought taking my daughter to the movies was more important. Uh, hello, it is. <laughs> so. You know, like, that's how it should be. But when you hear Ironman training, especially if an athlete and their family has had a bad experience with it, like, nobody likes to take a back seat. Nobody. You right. Know, and, and I'm sure even, you know, Maddie sometimes feels like she's taken a she's taken a back Jeez, seat. man, you got to get me and, going on that guilt. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's so like you think about your family – like and so it just it just it's you that's what I think doesn't help is that, that there's this you know you're you're talking to your significant other you're talking to yourself your friends like Iron Man all right so I've got to run a marathon before and I've got to do like at least four or five century rides and I'm probably gonna have to at least do like three bricks of like 112 miles rides and then like 10 mile runs I'm like good like no wonder you hate it like or no wonder you get burnt out and so i to me that's what um you know that i think that's that's like that's what i think and what i feel in like when I, in terms of uh when i hear athletes talk about ironman training and they ask you know, how many hours is it going to take and what am i going to have to do and then hearing about their experience before i'm like i, I can understand why certain athletes are apprehensive to do it again or and or i can see why you know it's difficult having had a bad experience to get your significant other to give the green light because you're asking a lot yeah you know of the the people around you not just yourself yeah you almost have to have a foundational change fundamental change in your approach and your expectations um because that can the expectations, and we talked about it before, uh, can really play havoc with everything. And if you're going into these things with unrealistic thoughts about what we can do, like I getting ahead of yourself kind of thing, and, I, and I'm so guilty of that. You know, I've done that almost every time. And, you know, the fact that it's kind of weird because uh, – I think when I started, I, w- I was almost in my mind thinking that might be a one and done situation because it's, you know, like something you just want to do and 
you want to go. And thankfully, I've stuck around. And, you know, it's taken me a long time to kind of figure out the sweet spot of things. And uh, mm-hmm. I, it's almost like now, you know, I feel like now is, you know, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of that has to do with actually being on these podcasts and being around it and being around all these people. And I think that that's, uh, you know, one, we're kind of, uh, I don't know, selfish or not, or whatever you want to call it, but we... We uh, it takes a while for things to sink in and listen and learn and um, and now, it's just taking me now you know so um, and I'm still not perfect with it but the more you <laughs> it just takes time you know and the more I I try to it's almost like every year you say yeah I think you're gonna be ready for Kona next year you know you always give me that <laughs> and I think it's kind of great you know <laughs> it's like. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, man. I'm feeling and you're like, well, you know, I keep doing what you're doing, you know. It's like next year might be your year or whatever. And <laughs> it's just like the subtlest little lesson that that just kept sneaking away from me, you know. And it it makes sense. Um uh, it's just uh it can be really disruptive if if you let it or it can be and it kind of goes back to the you know your why what we always talk about your why and why are you doing it and and usually it should just be to feel good and have a better life you know yeah yep it it's it is man it's like because i mean you you look at like going back to like where we started like the for i mean it's july so basically all of august and then even most september like athletes that are racing are going to be putting themselves through like horrific conditions like with that are just gonna be so hot and like you look at muncie and you're thinking all right uh we paid for that Mm -hmm. (laughs) we 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 trained for that we spent money on you know gear and equipment and coaching and travel and we got up early on these days and we didn't sleep in and we ate right and we skipped out on some desserts and and we just like so we can what like bake in the hot sun and scorch ourselves to death sure let's do it again and it's like, like, yeah, I think you, some people say like you might have a few screws loose, but I think it's like that internal drive and also like that internal question of like, how much, how much better can I get? And, and do I want to work harder to find out or am I just okay? Just like cashing it in. And, you know, I think like there's. You know, like at Muncie, for example, there's like 2,500 people at the start line, and you got 2,500 different goals, you know, and, and different lives and different experience levels and different perspectives. And everybody's going to learn something and take something from it. And hopefully it's a good thing. Um, you know, but I, I do. I just think that there's it's your, it's your approach. And like you said, it's like going back to your why. And, you know, is that going to be. Um, you know, relegated to like, is it about talent or is it about ability or is it about, you know, the way that you approach the sport and what you really want to get out of it? Um, the friendships, the, uh, the health, you know, like one of the most underrated aspects of this whole entire thing is how much healthier it makes people. Um, you know, whether it's it losing, it could, you know, yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, losing weight or, or lowering your blood pressure or, or getting off, you know, because like not being a diabetic anymore, or you know, all these kind of things, or help fighting depression. Like, there's a million different things this sport can help you do if you look at it, you know, the right way, and you don't obsess about it in an unhealthy way. That it overtakes everything. Like, it, it's nothing about this sport is an emergency. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing about the sport is an emergency. Nothing about it should keep you up at night. Nothing about it should be like I, just, I don't know what to do. Like, is it? Can I, can I don't even know if I can do this today, or can I do this, or is it too? I'm like, calm, first of all, calm down. Uh, this is a hobby. Like we, we, we. This is a hobby, and it's one where we lose money. <laughs> so, you know, from a financial standpoint, like if you look back on the person who's been in this sport for, you know, ten years. I bet you they've spent well over fifteen thousand dollars on the sport. Sure. And you want to look at that person and think, all right, well, if I could cash, if I could write you a check for fifteen thousand dollars right now, 
but you'd have to give up or basically every memory you've ever had of training and racing, you know, would be gone. And it's like, it never happened. Like, wh- which would you choose? And I, pro- I I guarantee you some people would choose the check. Oh, for because, sure. Because of the, because of their approach or they haven't gotten enough out of it or, or they've, you know, been injured the whole time or they haven't made any friends or, or they're the, the, the athlete that does every race and is never happy with themselves. You know, yeah. or never, and like, of course, I take a check. For me, hell no, I wouldn't take it. Yeah. Like, you know, you 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 erase these, you know, erase your friendships, erase the experiences, and you base, you know, erase every characteristic trait you've ever learned or strengthened by ha- being being in the sport. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's just a lot of things you can't put a price tag on. Right. So you're putting that, you know, fifteen thousand dollars. So it's like, when you think of it that way, it's what are you investing in? You know, mm-hmm. what are you spending that money on? I mean, because you're not losing that money, you shouldn't be. It should be an investment. And I think, can we? You know, if we talk about health, and that's always a huge one for me. You know, you just want to, you know, most people just want to feel good. And like I said, you know, sooner or later, health is going to become the most important thing in someone's life. You know, and mm-hmm. I think it's interesting because, um, you know, obviously, you by you know attrition get in quote unquote better health you know training and stuff like that but i don't necessarily know you know like if you're going overboard and and i've done this before where you're training out of your comfort zone all the time and you're beating yourself down uh, that health factor becomes you know uh, it might feel worse in some ways you know and and i think that can be tricky. So that's to me is like the the major reason why um, I think almost every everyone should be looking at what's going to make me feel better or how am I going to feel better and slowly, you know. And and sometimes it's also hard to keep an eye on. You know how you when you're in something you can't like it's I think it's good to reflect a little bit too because you know you might be you know thinking you're not in that great a shape or whatever but look back you know. Yep. It, you're this slow burn of getting, you know, slowly in better shape is sometimes unrecognizable if you don't step away from it and go, wow, man, you know, look at, uh, yeah, I mean, look at the, your buddy who decided he wanted to do one and got out and look where he's at right now and, you know, um, kind of stand next to him or whatever and say, hey, you know, I guess I am and this is paying off, you know? Yep. Because it's, uh, it's a hard, it, you know, I think you have to remind yourself, you know. Yeah, um, I mean, it, it, here's the thing is that <laughs> you're either going to remind yourself and remember or something's going to happen and you're going to, ha- like, you just don't have a choice. You know, like, you know, for, like, for Steffi, for example, like, she, you may or may not have, like, gotten that whole new perspective if, if that bike wreck hadn't have happened. Mm-hmm. And so now she's coming into her biggest race of the year with a whole different perspective, having learned, you know, if <clears throat> if I would have been like, oh, okay, well, so what's the perfect lead up for Chattanooga? You know, okay, I'm going to crush and I'm going to have a huge PR at Muncie. I'm going to feel great. I'm going to be healthy coming out of it. And then I'm perfect ready for the race. That's what everybody's going to say. Mm-hmm. But now looking back, it's like, okay, what if that bike wreck was the best thing that ever happened to you? You know, with your new perspective, and now you, instead of having the blazing through a PR, you trudged through, and were determined enough to finish your race with these injuries. You know, that not that she wasn't hurting herself by racing anymore, but just like toughing it out, fully well knowing today isn't going to be that day. I know I'm not going to PR. I know it's going to be brutally hot. I know that I'm. It's going to hurt to get through it but I'm choosing to do it anyway. Like, you there, you can't, that's something you can't put a price on. Yeah. Hey, who was, it reminds me of, uh, who was the guy, was it at Kona? The pro that uh, finished the race? Oh, man, was it after a bike wreck? Do you remember what I'm talking about? I uh, don't. Damn, it was a couple, week, couple years ago, maybe. Uh, was it Keenly? That finished? No, it would. He had a flat one year, but I mean, there's, there's always somebody that has like some kind of a wreck, or you know, but chooses to finish, or 
um, something bad happens, but, you know, and chooses to, like, stick it out. Or, you know, you see athletes who, like, um, you know, basically have something happen like a, uh, you know, a flat tire mechanical and, like, they know that they're basically out of the money. Yeah. But they choose to still finish in, like, 30th or 40th place. Um, to do something like, you know, they would say, like, I'm just paying respect to the sport or the right, event. Right, yeah, yeah. And I, I can totally finish. Uh, and a lot of people think it's a, ba- it's a bad business decision for these pros because they, you know, their body and their health is, is their paycheck. Uh, but you have a lot, a lot of them, like, you know, I just, just because I had a bad day or mechanical or I wasn't feeling it doesn't mean I'm going to quit. You know, and they stick out there and they're, like, out there giving high fives to the age groupers and, you know, doing stuff like that. And, and that's that stuff goes a long way as well. Sure. And that's a that's an event that really sets up a, a good way to remember how, you know, how this, <laughs> you know, how good you feel when you feel good, you know. And, you know, if you got to struggle through stuff like that and you have, a, have it branded in your memory, it's sort of like man, I was there and now I'm here again. You know, I guess it's sort of like yep. a Tim Don story, man. Yeah, ex- exactly. You know? Yep. I think he's doing a full here in the next few weeks. Uh, uh, I believe so. But yeah, it's, it's, and listen, like you, it like, it's like so many other things in life. If you're so, I don't want to say self-absorbed, but if you're so dialed in and obsessed with tunnel vision on one thing, and you and you lack any awareness at all you're going to miss so many learning experiences and you're going to miss out on so many opportunities to learn from your to learn from your mistakes or to learn about yourself because all you see is this one thing is that all and that's all that matters uh and it's just it's it's a lack of awareness on uh on a lot of fronts and it usually you know it's also usually starts in training um, but you know, it obviously ends up in the race as well. Mm-hmm. Um, there was, uh, of course I, I said, I was going to ask you a few questions. I have one other quick question <laughs> yeah. that, uh, <laughs> um, that always seems to come up before every race. And it's this question of, does anybody have any last minute race advice? Well, <laughs> I'm just curious what your response to that is. Have fun. Have fun. Mm-hmm. I say it every time, and I get it obviously every single, every single weekend. You know, any last minute tips? Uh, well, a it's always have fun. Um, and really, that's usually what it is because I know they, they like the athlete doesn't need me to pump them up or make them more anxious. They're already there. <laughs> you know, it's like, um, you know, now if it's like a sprint or an Olympic, you know. Um, I may say something like bike really, really hard. And then when you, and then, then, you know, and then run fast. And when you can't run any faster, find a way, mm-hmm. uh, that's about it. But yeah, I'm not really much big into, um, you know, listen, a last minute tip isn't really going to do much if you haven't practiced it. You know, it just gives you one more thing to think about. So I think it's, you know, have fun, you know, enjoy yourself have fun uh, um or like in a rate on a, an event like muncie you know i might say something uh, like I, uh, for some athletes that i was going back and forth but i said just remember it's, it's all about the run mm-hmm. it's all about the run especially in a course like that when it's so easy to get caught up and just like go balls out on the bike because it's so fast and everybody's going so fast um, you can just get totally eaten alive on the run. Um, and, and, and patience is patience. Yeah. Have fun. Be patient is one that is one that I use a lot, but yeah, mostly just have fun. I mean, you yeah. do all the hard work, go have fun. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I assume that you give all those other, you know, uh, you have all those other discussions and up to that, but this is sort of like the last before bedtime thing and definitely have fun and, and uh kind of just forget it's uh forget that you're racing i think until <laughs> the last few miles of that run you know sort of yeah like, have fun yeah seriously because like it, it is an interesting point you bring up about that muncie bike course i think that you know everybody looks at muncie as kind of um going in i think that there's a tendency for people to think that that's uh quote unquote an easy course 
because mm-hmm. the bike. And then I've seen just dozens and maybe hundreds of people get, you know, slaughtered on that run course because they've <laughs> tried to stay, you know, tried to just really go out and get their best bike and stick with that pace and go crazy. And then that run always just eats you because, mm-hmm. you know, people will be deceived into thinking that, yeah, it's a little rolling hills, but that thing... Eat you up, man. It's scorching. They will, eat, they will eat you up. But, yeah, it's just it's just have fun. Yeah. Uh, thanks to everybody that's been uh, pledging and, you know, giving us a little bit on the side, you know, as far as uh, for the podcast support and for all the podcasts we've done. And uh, I've, I was going to try a new thing here today. With, I haven't asked your permission or we haven't discussed you, it. You don't need to go for it. I was going to say uh, the... Unless you're about to fire me. That's not it. No, you're, you're right, good, cool. man. You're solid. <laughs> we, got, we got a solid thing. Sweet. Uh, pretty low key. I'm coming to your direction as far as discipline, and you're coming mine as far as chilling, laid back, laying it back. Um, I was gonna say the first person to go to crushingiron.com and leave us a pledge, I will send them a crushing iron hat. Oh, um, so winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yeah, we'll see who the first one that comes in is, and uh, you get the email when that happens, right? I do, yeah. Yes. Hat or hat or visor, if you're a visor person. Hat or visor. Yep. Yeah, we so, do have uh, one one color visor left. We got a simple, you know, you just kind of go on there and pledge one time. It's at crushingiron.com. There's a pledge tab up there, and uh, if you're still hanging around and you you drop on the site and give us the first pledge, we will uh, we'll send you a hat in the mail. Yep. You and, can rep it. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, anything else going on in your mind? No, nah, man. I'm uh, ready for another week. Back at it. I think Iron Man Lake Placid is this weekend. Ooh. Um, a, an iconic, long-lasting Iron Man event. Um, one that is definitely on my list uh, for uh, a to-do. And uh, starting to taper a little bit for my own race in Ohio. You got a race this weekend in Music City. Uh, Music City event where you have uh, predicted you will be on the top of the podium. Let's I didn't say forget. top. <laughs> ah, that's, I heard top. No, I said uh, I'll be on the podium if top. my swim is under 28 minutes. But yeah, now I've got a few qualifiers. I'm ass. thinking about just backing off of that whole thing. Good God. I, I mean, especially um, when I saw the start time for the race is 6.45. Jesus. Hey, Jesus. Is it, hey, is it, is it this Saturday or this Sunday? It's Saturday. Okay, yeah. So uh, uh, probably won't. I, they have a, I think they have a bike check this time. Have they always had bike check? I think so. Oh. Yeah. Uh, it's, so his s- birthday is Friday, so we'll be doing two-year-old stuff. And then his birthday party is Saturday, so I don't think I can make it. But uh, yeah, I'll see. I I've got know. a... Uh, I'm so a strong... I, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what time I got to get up because I got. I'm riding my bike to the race, which is about six seven miles maybe nice mm-hmm. easy warm-up but mm-hmm. that means i have to leave here oh yeah you know pretty early i smell an excuse coming <laughs> what kind of an excuse podium, uh, well, about the podium business yeah, or just missing the race <laughs> well missing the race <laughs> that's why i was trying to get somebody to come down and join me man so i had yep. a backup alarm clock Maybe you can get CC to come down there with you. He's out of town. I yeah. tried. He's, he's semi-retired anyway. Yeah. He's like he's like the Brett Favre of a triathlon. Retired, yeah, but he takes me out to the trace and kicks my ass here. every every other third week. Okay. Well, it's because he's fresh. <laughs> he's fresh. <laughs> he's fresh. Uh, no, yeah, lots of racing going on. And we'll be up at Ohio 70.3 uh, there in Delaware. Uh Next weekend, we'll have a ton of athletes raising. So if you see us, come up, say hi. Uh, we'd love to meet anyone and everyone. Uh, we'll be up there for, for Thursday night. Uh, yeah. So, hey, if you're in and around Columbus uh, or Delaware and you're up there early and you want to take Mike and I out for dinner, we're available. Uh, uh, Thursday <laughs> nice, night, we're staying. Nicely done the, there, Coach. Staying at the Staybridge Suites, Columbus Polaris. Uh, so, yeah. We would. Uh, you got the room number this. yet? Uh, no, I don't remember yet. We, I'm not giving that out either. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
we got a couple of one star and two star reviews. They might be up there, might want to, you know, pull a fire alarm on our floor. Um, but yeah, looking forward to that. We, we may do a uh, Facebook Live from the road like we did for Texas. That seemed to go over well. Uh, and but definitely a podcast. So uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. And if you have any questions about uh, swim analysis, our camps uh, in 2019, coaching or training plans, or the blog, other podcast archive videos, you can always go to our website, which is crushingiron.com, and that is your one-stop shop. And if you have any other questions, comments, stories, or feedback, uh, you can always obviously uh, email Mike directly crushingiron at gmail.com or myself at c26coach at gmail.com all right man it's been a pleasure happy Uh, monday happy monday we'll uh we'll probably podcast from the road on thursday i don't know maybe or maybe give a bonus cast or something that's that's next week man not this week oh that's next week yeah yeah Yeah. well you sure you don't want to go up this week yeah i'm sure okay <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> All right, dude. <laughs> All right, thanks for joining us. Uh, this has been the Crushing Iron Podcast. Over and out. Yep, see you. Dude.